Good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Incredible Wolfie, good evening. Welcome. How is world domination going today? Yeah. Since you mentioned it, I'm not going to forget it now, am I? <laughs> oh dear. Well, I finished the... For those people that may be watching at this moment in time, and now I finished the chain, micro chain mail bracelet that I was working on, just to show. There we go. And hmm, another sparkly thing to go with the sparkly thing. So um, I came all all day today. I've kind of been thinking about trying to work out what I could do tonight. And inspiration is just, geez, that's even, I cannot think about anything. I was going to do some pyrography, but just, I don't know. I was thinking, just for simplicity, to maybe just do something like an Overwatch logo and, and maybe, I don't know, Destiny 2 logo, side by side on a piece of, piece of paper. Piece of wood. But... It didn't really strike me. I mean, it's black and white, literally black and well, that's the 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 uh, Overwatch logo is. It's got a bit gold on it, but black and white effectively. Mm, it didn't strike me, so I was sort of just casting around, and I just could not get any sort of idea about what I wanted to do. So. I have this project to finish, so I might as well do some work on this while I think about it. You are feeling satisfied. You, you, oh, you did that of last night. <laughs> uh, you beat him, you beat him uh, twice, two rounds, um, with a deck that he thought was no good. Yeah, it's not bad going, uh, Wolfie. All about the skill of the player, not the uh, not the tools that the, it's done with. Yeah, I like that. Well done. Um, yeah, so doing uh, this, uh, doing some more on this uh, whilst um, till inspiration revisits, and I can think. I just cannot. Can't. I mean, it's not even like I'm saving saving wood. I've got plenty of practice wood, you know. Uh, there's, there's four pieces here, practice wood. Um, it's not like I'm saving it for anything. I, you know, I can practice. I can do what I like on this. I can just doodle. And maybe that was the answer. I don't know. Maybe we'll just doodle tomorrow. Um, but I just can't, just, I just could not think of anything tonight. Maybe what I'll have to do, uh, Wolfie, is take a, um, take one of your, uh, Hearthstone cards and make a big version of one of them. I don't know. Um, Because the rank isn't always uh, as obvious as it seems. Um, that would be, I mean, if he's been playing with easier decks, then he, he may have less ability, but playing with, a, with an easier, higher value deck, if you like, um, because it's easier to beat somebody like that, you don't have to have as much skill. And therefore, you with more, with actually more skill, uh, can use a lower value deck and beat him because you know how to use it. So it wouldn't surprise me. Um, would there be a good one that you think, Wolfie, that would uh, would be? Would there? Do you know of an image of a card that would be good that we could do that with? I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what the Hearthstone cards look like, but um, it would seem like a reasonable sort of thing to uh, to do. Have a go at it. Uh, 
it'd be more in the line of fan art, I guess. Uh, how about we go halfway in between? <laughs> actually, it doesn't actually matter, to be honest. Um, the, the harder they are, the longer they take to do, basically. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, more, it's more that. Things with lots of... Things with lots of colours are harder because they're going to be translated into sort of black and white type images. So, but um, you know, something in between, I guess. But it doesn't doesn't really matter. I mean, what, what one that you you think people would like to see done? Um, and in the meantime, that seems like a good idea, actually. <laughs> you could you could go on for the rest of your life doing Hearthstone cards. Um, in pyrography. <laughs> um, there's, I won't say there's that many of them, but they, you know, they'll take a little while to do. So I shall do a little bit of the, well, a little bit more of this, because there's a heck of a lot left to do on this. Uh, so the next choice is what colour do I do next? There's seven, or there's two, or, well, there's quite a few colours there, uh, including continuing with the black. And I know what. Let's continue with the black. Let's just complete do some more of the black, uh, which is colour number five. Uh, colour number five. Where are you? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's uh, potentially an old joke. I think. Uh, Eleven, ten, four, five, six, seven. It's probably a new packet then. Although I don't see black in there. No, I don't see black in there. So where? Oh, there it is. Hidden out of sight. So the whole area of black here for for the rest of the face. That's. Um, Let's complete the black. If nothing else, it will kind of feel like I've got more of it done if I do that. Plus the black is kind of really rather sparkling, so... I mean, when you, when you see in, in here, it, it, it just in the bowl here, it, it sparkles. A bit like black gold. And we'll turn it this way, which I know is a little bit awkward to see when you're looking at it over the camera, but it's easier to, to do, put stuff on without resting my hand on the sticky stuff. Although it's not necessarily as easy to see, that's all black in there, so at least I don't have to worry about uh, getting the wrong things in the wrong place. Okay. Yeah, so unfortunately, as, as kind of already mentioned, uh, inspiration uh, sort of escaped me for something to do in pyrography, but uh, hopefully um, we'll be able to uh, do a, a heartstone card. Heartstone card. I keep wanting to call them heartstone. I'm not quite sure. Hearthstone stone card uh, tomorrow. I guess in a little little way that's kind of cheating slightly because it, it'll it's not exactly copying, but it's sort of not doing something completely from scratch. But uh, If anybody thinks um, even uh, making a um, copy in pyrography is easy, they are welcome to try! It's, um, there is uh, two sets of skills involved in, in any art form. There's the, if you like, there's a set of skills which lets you originate something from scratch. 
Um, and then there's a set of skills that, having got an image, you then uh, appropriately um, execute that image, <laughs> is, is the way I'd put it. So that's actually sort of put paint to paper or pyrography to wood, whatever. But you actually change the, the image into the picture. Um, they're two completely different sets of skills and um, there are people that are good at one and not good at the other and uh, you know, there's a, the lucky people who can do both. I'm kind of halfway. Sometimes I can do create images and other times mm, it, it escapes me. <laughs> um, but I, I certainly can, can convert images into uh, finished art pieces so that's uh, that's something I'm fairly confident about doing. You think that would be cool to do? What uh, what the uh, the Hearthstone image? Yeah. Well, so I'll find one that uh, strikes me. And we'll have a go at that. I did actually have a look to see uh, t tonight. I was thinking maybe of uh, doing something like one of the characters from uh, you know something like Destiny or maybe Overwatch. Uh, the Overwatch because the more of a cartoon character would perhaps be sort of easier. But I couldn't find. It's not a game I play, so I, I kind of don't really know the characters, and I, I so I was kind of looking at the various images available uh, through through you know, your favourite search engine. Not a lot of fantastically interesting pictures. So because I don't you know, because I don't know the characters uh, in there, it's kind of difficult to originate art with from them. Because you don't actually know what it is you're, uh, you're drawing, which is kind of a bit awkward. But you do play those games too, yeah? Well, lots of people do. Um, I've watched a few. Um, I must admit, to watch, I because I'm mm, I'm about to say something, uh, which is sort of might sound a bit odd, but I don't. I, I don't. Wa I don't particularly find watching Overwatch, for example, all that interesting. Um, if I played it, I possibly would. But I don't particularly find it all that interesting because it just seems to be the same thing. You just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Now, when you're playing it, I can understand it's an interesting and a fun game to play. Uh, but for me to, for me watching it, it you know. Um, it's kind of like, well, apart from the fact that it's just sort of run, shoot things, die, get resurrected, run, shoot things, die, whilst performing the objective, which you know, escorts them into safety. Um, but it just really does seem like, um, you know, they, the the from a from a watching perspective, it's it's highly highly repetitive. Um, so I'm not uh, not quite sure uh, in watching. It's not something I, I watch a lot of. I, I've seen a little bit of Destiny 2. I think that's newly out, isn't it? So, um, and I'm sure that you, I'm sure that there are modes of Destiny 2 that probably are um, repetitive. But I've only seen it seen it played so far in. Oh, I've only watched it played so far in story mode, if that's what they what it is, and uh, that sort of proved interesting to watch. Now I'm sure even yeah, <laughs> uh, that's kind of uh, these a lot of games these days are kind of repetitive in in the way they do things, but uh, uh, I don't know, that's uh, so far that seems a. Uh, uh, it's sort of a, an interesting game. Right, so just move this out of the way. Oh no, I'm I, I'm sure the game. It's not. It's not 
it, um, it's 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 not a comment about playing the game, Wolfie. It's a comment about um, me sat watching the game. You know, uh, I I am I am well. Yeah, you know, I'm certain that it, it is. You know, especially in a group of people, group of friends, especially. Uh, it's it's a real fun game to play. It kind of looks like that, you know, from from the way you uh, people are playing it and things like that. But uh, it it was a comment on on watching it uh, when, uh, as I say, if you're interested in playing that game, probably watching it is is interesting. Not only to see how other people do it, you know, the the tricks that other people might sort of find to surviving longer or whatever. Um, but uh, for somebody who is just sort of a um, what's their casual interest? Sort of like I might go see a, a, a film. You know, it's uh, I, I'm I'm not I'm not intending to go. You know, you might go watch a James Bond film. I'm not intending to be an international spy or anything. So it's just fun to watch. And uh, uh, I watched I've watched Overwatch a little bit, and then uh, you know I've had enough and generally go watch something else. But I think, I mean, that's that's, that's what a lot of these uh, games are aimed at these days, isn't it? People, people playing, uh, people playing in groups. So uh, there's there's a lot of these um, cooperative, uh, massively multi, you know, massively multiplayer uh, games that are around, um, getting people sort of to cooperate, work with each other, and things. And and it is that sort of thing which you know, makes a game. Uh, fun when you are able to uh, to work with the other players. So yeah, I can uh, totally understand that. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some people out there that goes, who on earth would want to play an RPG? <laughs> Why on earth would anybody make games like that? It's um, I I was kind of about to say and I, I don't fantastically like the playing uh, a lot of shooting games, but in actual fact that's not true. Uh, it, it, it's a slightly misleading statement anyway for me to say it. I kind of do, but I don't like playing them. In the style that you get on, like the PC and the the Xbox, etc. Um, potentially partly because I'm no good at playing them, but but I did enjoy and do enjoy playing them on things like the the, the Wii, the Nintendo consoles, because you've got a controller which you can aim. So you know, on the PC, you're using a mouse or, or an Xbox controller, an Xbox. You know, the Sony console, you're using a, a controller to move your uh, aim around. And that I'm never particularly good at, I can't move it fast enough in the right, but give give me a controller where I can actually aim and I then quite enjoy enjoy playing those games because it, again it's down to, it's a different skill, you know, point and shoot, but you're pointing with something and uh, then I kind of enjoy um, enjoy that sort of game. So you know, um, I think you know the Resident Evil series, for example. Um, I think even things like uh, the Shamus, uh, Shamus, um, Shamus, trying to think what like what the games are now. Um, <laughs> the name's gone completely out of my mind, but. Um, same, same, 
I'm trying to think. The character's name's coming to mind, but it, it was uh, it was a launch title with I think the uh, one of the uh, one of the Nintendo consoles. Uh, Seamus Allen um, is the character name, and I cannot remember the game. Metroid, Metroid, one of the Metroid games, uh, which which used sort of the the uh, ability to actually point with the controller. Uh, and shoot, so you're using it like a gun uh, from that point of view. And if you really uh, wanted to do so, of course, you can put the controller into a gun-like carrier to work. To work. And I enjoyed playing those because you actually had to, because of that ability to freeform point without having to move an analog stick or, or um, a mouse. No, there's something different about it: the light gun effect. Your demo is expected to be out by the end of this week. That's not bad going. You're really pushing that forward, aren't you? Yeah, as in yeah, uh, delivering quickly. So when you're launching your Kickstarter at the same time to go to go with the demo. So those people who are watching this and, and may have uh, no idea what on earth it is I'm doing, or even what magic dots are. Um, I think this is probably a clone of. Something, well, I'm almost certain it's a clown of something called Diamond Dots, uh, which is probably somewhat similar. So what you, what, what, Magic Dots, Diamond Dots, um, any other name you can think of that these things get called, um, they get described as similar to things like cross stitch and stuff like that, but not really. Sort of close, sort of not, and um, what they're talking about in things like that, they sometimes describe it like painting by numbers, is because of this. You might not be able to see it, but each of these are little squares, and in each of them is a symbol. In this case, it's a number, number five, A, one, uh, eight, and so on, various numbers around the place, and they're coloured as well, very much like you. Uh, might have on a painting by numbers chart or a cross stitch chart um, where they, they have you know, uh, symbols to represent which colour thread or which colour paint to use. This is kind of the same. So it's a it's a printed image. It's been printed in a in a pixelish style. So it's not it's not exactly super high res, but it's been designed to sort of be work with these in, in this pixel style. Uh, and then these are little these are little plastic domes, so the flat bottomed domes and, and if you can imagine like taking a, a soccer ball and cu cutting the top off uh, or the bottom off which <laughs> you want to look at it so it's flat bottomed the top is 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 then being faceted or cut into facets very much like a diamond would be and I guess that's where the name diamond dots came uh, from the dots in a sort of a diamond shape. And it's that faceting which then causes it to reflect light back and it, it sparkles. As you can see, if I move this one slightly, you can see the sparkling. And that's just reflecting off the faceted tops. So this image then, once they've created it, has been covered in glue. Like a... a uh, it, well, it's, it's sort of dry to touch, but it's sticky. So, you know, that sort of... Uh, it's not where it doesn't run, it stays exactly where it is but it's sticky and what I'm doing is using this tool to pick up the dot uh, and put it flat side down uh, where it sticks on the glue and that's essentially all this is. Um, yeah, no, that's one way out of it couple of ways of looking at it. Your demo can either be a, um, a demonstration of what the game might become with the Kickstarter type thing, or it's the reward for it. And if it's finished early, it's finished early. 
Of course, what what you're then saying is the Kickstarter isn't for what I've already done, it's for what I will do next. Um, so, because otherwise you'll get people basically saying, if you've already done it, why do you need the money? <laughs> um, and it's kind of sort of slightly sort of counterproductive to, or counter to, I guess, what Kickstarter is about to have uh, done it that way. But uh, whatever. No, not really, uh, Wolfie. I was just explaining to uh, anybody else that's watching what it is this is, you know, that I'm doing here. Um, and, uh, what what this craft pastime is. You know, it's sticky and it's got numbers and you put dots on and what the dots are. Uh, you you've heard that uh, description before, so you you haven't uh, you haven't missed anything at all there. And I, I still haven't counted how many dots are on this. And, and strictly speaking, I'm not going to count how many dots are on it. I will count how many are on one side and how many are on the other side and do the multiplication. At some point I'll do that. If only just to know how many tens of thousands there are, because I'm sure there are tens of thousands um, dots. And I will have placed every single one by hand. People that haven't heard the the story about this, and my apologies to those that have heard it more than once. Um, I, in an advertising email that I get from one of the shops that I do deal with for um, uh, things like cross stitch materials, I saw an advert for something called Diamond Dots, uh, and the kits for which were uh, relative. Well, sh not relative, they were expensive. Uh, in UK pounds, a, a kit was about £30. Quite a lot of money. And uh, But I didn't know what it was, so I went looking for uh, YouTube videos and came across uh, videos that sort of explained what it was, or at least showed you doing it. And it kind of looked interesting, but not, not interesting enough to spend £30 on a kit. And I, I then sort of thought, well, let's have a look on eBay for, uh, and, well, not eBay, actually, um, Amazon in this particular case. Um, see if there's anybody selling these kits at somewhat less than the £30. And that's when I came across the um, the clown, shall we say, which is, which is what these are. Um, where I got, I think it was seven kits for about 20... I can't actually remember how much I paid now. It's about like 15, 20 UK pounds for seven kits, uh, which seems a lot better value for me. And so I, uh, I got this particular one, not only because I like the, the image, and that's the only reason why I got any of them, is I like the image. But I got this one because I thought some of them that you get uh, will have just the dot, the dots that you fill in in just a small part of the image the rest is printed with no glue on it so you don't put dots on it just the bit in you know, in the middle or something like i've got one that's got a lion i think it's a sizable lion but it doesn't fill the whole canvas uh and i i got a few of the well i got i think the, i don't think i've got another one this size but let's say i got you know six of those and I thought, I'm probably going to get through these really quickly because it's, you know, there's only a few, <laughs> a few dots in the middle. So it would be nice to get one where, you know, the whole picture was dots. And that's one of the reasons why I picked this one, because I thought, oh, you know, the others have got a few dots. These, you know, this has got a, a few more. Uh, so, you know, it might take me a couple of hours or whatever to do this. <laughs> it is surprising. And I haven't counted them, as I say, how many dots are on here. I have been doing this for this picture, probably for at least 10 hours, at least. I'd have to go look at uh, all the, because it's all been done on Twitch. 
So I'd have to go look at my recorded archive to see how many streams, but there must be at least five or six streams. And I'm not even half finished. So the original thought of, oh, a couple of, um, a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Smith, no, uh, Smith, Smire, Smire H. Not quite sure how to pronounce that. Amazon, Amazon UK in this particular case. They were on. Um, Alibaba may have them, I guess, but they were. These were on on Amazon and uh, UK pounds wise. I think the most expensive was about two seventy five that I bought. Smear. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Always nice to know how to pronounce somebody's name properly, even if I fail abominably at it sometimes. But yeah, no, um, I'm assuming there'll be an Amazon com as well, and an, an Alibaba. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, I failed abominably at uh, pronouncing it correctly the first time. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm sure they possibly are on uh, Alibaba, but I haven't looked. Um, Oh, is this going to be a... Okay. Oh, it doesn't look... It doesn't look... Um, un undoable, it doesn't sound the right way to put it. Um, for anybody watching, um, the link that Incredible Wolf has just paid is uh, uh, placed is, is a Hearthstone card. And I, as it says in the stream title, I lost inspiration tonight about doing something. And I was talking with Incredible Wolf earlier on in the stream about maybe doing a a, heart, a Hearthstone card. Uh, you know, taking the card and essentially just replicating it, but in um, uh, pyrography. And uh, he has been. Uh, very kindly taking a look for one that he thought might be a good, good image to do. It doesn't seem um, uh, overly hard to do. There's some detail, but not a lot of detail. You, you'd have a go. Yeah. Uh, do you do any um, thing like pyrography uh, smear? Um, I mean, the hardest part about that is is obviously the colour image in the front, in the the, the centre there, but uh, that doesn't look particularly difficult. So maybe what I'll do is I'll print that image out. You wish. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Um, well, one reason why not, maybe not having the tools to do it, but. Um, I do, I do, I do love to encourage people to try something. I mean, pyrography maybe is not a good thing because you actually have to go out and buy some tools to do it. But um, um, is there a best one, um, Smear? I mean, that was kind of um, a discussion that Incredible Wolfie and I were having earlier. Was that? Um, yeah, he uh, he had a conversation with another player who uh, was, shall we say, uh, expressing that a particular uh, deck was uh, really poor to play with, and uh, uh, you know wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be a, a great Hearthstone card deck if you like, and Incredible Wolfie then promptly beat the fella or the person uh, to out of. Uh, uh, well, two out of two rounds with that deck. <laughs> uh, is it okay? Uh, it's it's. I've sort of. I haven't really watched it to be honest. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not a Hearthstone player, so. No. Um. Okay. Thanks very much, Wolfie. Um. And uh, yeah, you've no time to do um, time, uh, tools or time. Yeah, I kind of understand that. Although having, I I, I have a, I find that 
Um, time seems to magically appear when there's something you want to do. <laughs> I don't know. You One always seems to be able to make time to do the things that one wants to do, whatever that is. Um, but uh, um, I think uh, there are... There's. Uh, I've had lots of conversations with people in the past about drawing, for example, um, where you don't need a particularly uh, a lot of tools. And, you know, people saying they can't draw and it's... Uh, I have the conversation, well, have you tried? No, because I can't draw. Well, how do you know you can't draw if you haven't tried? And, you know, you ought to see some of the drawings that I first did when I started. And I've got a little bit better, but I still do it anyway. Uh, the Lich King would be a nice one to do. Okay. Well, I mean, one of the one of the nice things about, I guess, about the cards, and I'm sure people have their own favourites as well, is that um, there's lots of them to choose from, isn't there? Oh, that's cheating. <laughs> that's that's cheating, Smear. You use, using a cutter. Um. Yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the people that used to drop in on the stream. Um. whose name has instantly has just at this moment escaped my mind used to do paper art um, with a scalpel which is what I'm holding up there uh, so no cutter actually hand cut paper art and I'm talking sort of a four star shape uh, sized um, now you need to you need permission to do uh, to drop a link uh, what would you like to uh, uh, what was the link for um, Smear. Of course, we'll have to wait 10 seconds for you to be, <laughs> to be timed out. Um, what was the link for, uh, Smear? Because if you tell me what the link's for, then I can I can permit you to... Uh, to... Oh, Lich Kings. Okay. I can uh, let's do a uh, there we go there you go Shmi if you would like if you'd like to post the link you can do I, I don't always uh, I won't necessarily follow the links okay thanks Wolfie uh, I don't always follow links in, in stream, but uh, and thanks me. I, I do have the, the chat log is here, so I will look at them uh, uh, afterwards. But uh, um, yes, she, uh, as I say, she uh, she cut out paper art using that. I mean, I, I, I do have a cutter, so I could do that, but it, it's kind of the. I suppose that the, the skill transfers then um, in 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 that case is from from the yeah, from the skill of actually executing the cutting. Um, it it transfers into drawing the original image in the first place, so that the cutter can then uh, then cut it out. And, and and there is a skill in that in its own right to be able to run a run a cutter successfully. Uh, I do know I've got one sat actually over there. Because I, I use it sometimes for cutting masks for um, airbrushing. Uh, so if, you, if you've got uh, particularly complex pans or something like that, I will sometimes cut the uh, masking material. Um, Well, it's it's more a case of yes, you have been here enough times, incredible Wolfie, to be trustworthy in, in sharing links. Not that Smear isn't untrustworthy, uh, but he's only been here for the one stream, so we don't know. Yeah. Oh, so you, you uh, yeah, stack, uh, stack, uh, stack sheets and make a, a sort of a three-dimensional thing as well, like and get them on um, cards and things. You've been here a while. <laughs> you just have uh, been quietly lurking in the corner. Okay. 
Yeah, well, I suppose you did, Wolfie. But it, it, you don't automatically get the right just because you've been here a while. You, you've got it because when you have shared links, they have been what you said they were for. And you followed the rules. You followed us two years ago. Ooh! Did you did you have a different uh, name back then, Smi? I don't actually. It's it's a name I don't actually. I it, I don't always remember names, but I kind of recognise the familiarity with them. Um, but twenty fifth of September two thousand and fifteen. Um, no same name. Okay, then my apologies for not remembering you from two years ago. Um, as, as you know, I stopped for a year, but September, that was about six months, wasn't it, after I started streaming, so... Um, mm. Okay. That's a tool that I did not know about. Incredible Wolfie, that, that link that he, um, that's, uh, Smear posted, luckily, <laughs> too late. <laughs> you, you were all right the first time, you were still within the two minutes. Uh, but uh, then, um, but I, I, can, I can do that. <laughs> that. That was the link he posted. You, you, uh, let me see if I can untime you out, uh, Smear. Um, see if I can remember how to do this. Because um, I think I do. If I do do that, I think then you should be back within a second. I think um, I think that works that way. So you should hopefully be able to smear. <laughs> Two minutes goes quick. It does, especially when I do it for an extra one second. <laughs> so that 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 um, that's a tool that I didn't actually uh, know about. Uh, it's quite a, an interesting one to look at. Yeah, that was um, that was virtually one month after I started again, Wolfie. I started in April again. And I, uh, let's say I took a year off, or mm, more more a case of for one year I didn't really feel like, like streaming anything. Part of the Twitch API. Yeah, well, well I, uh, yes, it, it can see that. Um, It's, you know, there's, there's there's a lot of capability in APIs though, and it's whether somebody has provided, whether it's Twitch or someone else, has provided the tools to exploit that API. Um, I know, uh, I, I kind of have looked through the API at times, but uh, and, and sort of felt like doing a few odd tools for myself, but um, I just yeah, never got around to it. Yeah. And now for some reason my brain's gone. You change shit. Um I hmm. Okay. What would that, uh, what would it do, uh, Wolfie? It's not, I'm sure it's a command potentially that you've seen used elsewhere, but uh, I don't actually know what one would do.
Um, I'm kind of surprised that for the API wise, if, if you, even if you've changed your name, it, unless you changed accounts, you know, actually started a new account, um, I, I would have thought that um, the API would know you as a person, uh, not as a particular username. And that way, um, it would give your original follow date. But hmm, that's how I do it. Doesn't mean that's how Twitch has done it. Uh, it was wasn't so much that, um, but yeah, there are times when I go when I I must admit I do go things like I don't really want to stream tonight, but um, then I have to, I kind of have to because I've kind of promised to do it um, for what you know by whatever means you want to uh, to think about it, um, especially when it's things like you know like to I, I won't say I didn't want to stream tonight. That's not true, but it was kind of like. I do not know what I'm going to do. <laughs> what am I going to do? It's kind of not like playing a game where you just start a new one or something like that. It's kind of uh, when it's creative, it's it's e uh, well, you know, if if I'm going to do pyrography, I've got to get the pyrography tools out. If I've got to do rare bush, I've got to get the whole uh, you know extractor and start the compressor and get the paint and stuff out. And sometimes I just feel I do not feel I want to do that. Um, Oh, okay, you mean listening to me make, make, makes it makes it sound like you 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 yeah I, I I can't quite get out what I was trying to say then uh, so I shall I shall stop before I get any further um now uh, back what happened about a well back in around April was. Something went on at work that meant I almost lost the job, my job, and I actually changed. Well, I'm still working for the same company, but I changed jobs completely as to what I was doing, and um, started a completely brand new job. And just at the just at the point, I just sort of did not want to. You know, having almost lost the job, I just kind of really was not interested in anything else. At that time, it just, I won't say I was depressed, that's because I wasn't, but um, I sort of lost interest in doing lots of things. And uh, even even though I'd sort of I'd got a new job, and part of it was I'd got a new job, I had a, a, a lot to learn in a very short period of time. And uh, streaming came out sort of a, a second to uh, you know, just getting on with a new job, and that's kind of what made it uh, stop. Okay. Yeah, it, it is kind of odd, Wolfie, because of course um, I'm sure you were following me um, before I stopped streaming under your old name before you changed your you changed your name. But that's you know it's. I mean, I suppose that that kind of suggests it, it's working it based on your name. Because when did you change your um, when did you change your name? Because of course you did. I think you. Uh, you must have refollowed me then um, in May uh, this year. Um, Oh, oh, I mean, at one point, uh, Twitch was randomly, uh, you know, unfollowing uh, people as well, weren't they? So it, it, it must, it must be picking up on your name, I think, uh, Incredible Wolfie. And going, yeah, it's it's a and you want, oh, as I say, you got you got unfollowed for some reason, and then uh, when you you refollowed again in May.
I have still no idea exactly how these things are being picked up. There's a little bit of wax in the end of here which you, you put in. But it sort of doesn't seem as though that would be enough to, to hold these things. Because they, they pick up so you know, just touch it and, and they're being picked up. And now wax is wax is sticky, but I wouldn't have thought it, you know. When you when you've pushed enough of these things on the end of there, you'd have thought you'd, you'd have pushed the wax out the way so that it was no longer making contact. But um, <laughs> that's probably right. Yes, <laughs> I don't I don't actually know what the what the kits are described as now. To be honest, um, Retro Banjo. Hello, welcome to the studio. Nice to hear from you again. And everybody else, Retro Banjo is a YouTuber. Got some, uh, well, retro games, it's all in the name. Um, feel free to introduce yourself, uh, Retro. And in case you want to post a link, because I'm not very good typing, let me just. Um, do a permit and then you can, if you want to, you can um, give people a link to your YouTube channel. <laughs> of course it, of course it is, you, you know me, I'm very kind. I may not have a huge following, but I am quite willing to uh, to let people know about about uh, your channel. It's not a problem, <laughs> and that's because you didn't come in immediately trying to advertise it. Anybody who does that gets banned straight away. <laughs> Actually, I think off the top of my head, it, it's it's just simply youtube.com slash retro banjo, isn't it? So, uh, anybody, you know, if, you, if you like sort of the old NES, SNES games, I think you, you've got at the moment. Yeah, I oh, think there you go. I talk rubbish on top of it. I'm not sure there's that much rubbish, but you can be sure I might remind you of that statement later. But uh, yeah, if you if you like literally the the original versions of some of these games, which is what Retro Banjo is playing, uh, together with with his commentary over the top, then uh, you know check check them out. There's some uh, there's quite a few videos there, and it's uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought when I first heard it uh, smear. <laughs> Enthusiastic, I think is the word. So what's what's the uh, what's the next project in uh, Retro Banjo? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I know you published uh, one t just tonight, I think, and I can't actually remember what it was. Um, what, what are you planning on? Uh, what, what's the what's the, the the next few videos you're planning on doing? Um, yeah, that's, well, not everybody. I don't tend to do it, except on my own stream, which is... Um... Well, you never know, we're incredible wolfy. Perhaps you ought to um, 
possibly letting Retro Banjo have a game there, because kind of a retro-ish style game. What am I making at the moment? Uh, kind of not making, more assembling I think is, is the case on this. This is something I, I well actually it was somebody in, in, in chat that described that best described it as magic dots. It this what this is is it's a clone. It's a clone of something called diamond dots, but uh, essentially it's it, it's a picture. Uh, which has sort of been pixelated, shall we say. Uh, and then um, a bit like painting by numbers or, or cross stitch patterns, uh, each, each of the, the pixel squares is in this case given a number or a symbol and there's a chart down the side which corresponds to the um, bags in which these things are. Um, what these things are are little domes of plastic. So the flat on the bottom with a domed top, and the domed top is is, is uh, faceted, been cut like a diamond facet, so that they sparkle like that. And all this really is is a case of taking one of the, you know one of those per square and putting it on the square. So this is coated in in a glue, a, a tacky sort of dry but tacky glue, and that's what this plastic is on there to stop the glue getting dust and things on it. Or fingerprints and things, and so it's really just a case of you know, uh, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down to match the colours. But then you get this sort of really rather striking sort of, in this case, striking image, which is all sparkly. So if you actually sort of put this up on a wall or something, as you walk past it, it just shimmers. Um, so I'm kind of more assembling. This is kind of just. Um, I call this craft work rather than artist work, but it's it, it's it, it doesn't it takes a little bit of skill to put the dot in the right place. But essentially, this is this is something that you you know is it's a nice relaxing thing that you can just do. Um, you know, it, you can get out and put away. You don't have to remember how far you've got or something like that. Yeah, dots by numbers, um, and uh, then just. You know, as long as I keep that safe, put them in a bag, perhaps I, I can just get it out at a moment's notice. I mean, it's great, like for tonight, because I was going to, I was trying to, as I was saying earlier on the stream, I've been trying, I was trying, going to do some pyrography, but I just, inspiration just deserted me. I could not think of what to do, and I don't know, I could, literally, I could just, Doodle. I could just get a piece of wood out and, and like a pencil, just doodle and see what what came. But it just uh, just was not. So I, this is a, a you know this is something that is a project to be finished. Um, so I can you know, I get this out from time to time in the odd stream and just carry on with it. Uh, steady answer. No, I don't know. I'm not bad, I suppose. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> Actually, I have got I have got reasonably steady hands, but um, you kind of don't really need it. It's like, can you use a pencil? I mean, that's it's it's more a case of needing the good glasses more than anything else than than a steady hand to do this. Oh, okay, um, I've not seen any of the Marvel ones, but. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, when I when I got these, and I, I, as I said earlier on in the stream, um, I, I got about seven kits for about 15, 20 UK pounds. So, uh, you know, two, two to three pounds a piece for the kit. I think this one was slightly more expensive because of the pure quantity of dots on it. And I got this, seriously, I got this thinking it would probably take me two to four hours to do. <laughs> uh, and I've probably done about, uh, well, I've done in excess of 10 hours so far, and it's not even half finished. 
Yeah, but yeah, pyrography. In fact, I've got a pyro just to show because I, I know you haven't seen these before. Uh, um, retro banjo. Uh, let me just cover that up so I don't stick things to it. But pyrography. That's a little bit out of focus, I'm afraid. Uh, be just because of where the camera is. But that's uh, that's the other kitten. It was. He was around. He's probably curled up on a chair in the kitchen at the moment. And that that was um, that was a one. Well, that was the last paragraphic image we did. And um, oh, the others are stacked over on the other side of the room. So, unless anybody really wants uh, an art show, um, I won't bother uh, getting any more. Thank you. That's uh, that's kind of you. Yeah. All right. I, I am giving in really easily to getting some more paragraphic images. <laughs> if, uh, since, since since we are talking, what's what what do I do on stream? I, I have got a, a whole handful of stuff here. Uh, I also do uh, carving. Um, that was the last piece we carved. Uh, we that's me. That is. <laughs> the stream so that that's a uh, that is actually well it's a dragon <laughs> if that wasn't obvious um, but it's actually a in fan art if you like it's a sorry I'm looking at my to the, the images over there um, this is this is a representation of a particular artist's drawing uh, there's a series of science fiction books written that were written by Anne McCaffrey. Unfortunately, she's no longer alive, but her son now writes the, the series. Uh, and the, the series is set on a planet called Pern. They're human explorers who have gone on to, down on the planet. And uh, on this planet, they have, using genetic engineering techniques, originally, they've lost all these in, in their history, but developed dragons which they ride. And the dragons, which breathe fire, do a particular job to keep them safe, uh, without going into the whole story. This one uh, is a particular uh, uh, was drawn like you know that particular um, pose was drawn by her favourite cover artist called Michael Wheeland, uh, and I love his depictions of the dragons. So I I sort of did it in carving, um, and this is actually of a dragon called Ruth. Who is white and it's a male dragon. Where do I get the wood? Um, anywhere that I can to be honest. It's not... This is in basswood and basswood in which is European line which you'd think would be quite good quite easy to get in Europe but doesn't seem to be. Um, nowhere in particular wherever I um, find somewhere that sells the pieces of wood that I happen to be, you know, like the size of really uh, um, smear um, so that's one carving and actually talking of carving as it happens to be here this is the first carving that was done on stream and then painted that was the first time we painted anything on stream. A lot of firsts. In fact, just everything, about everything is first. This is ash, and it's hard. And whilst whilst both of these are relief carving, you might notice this is somewhat shallower. <laughs> it's very hard um, uh, to carve uh, by hand, so it's really shallow. But um, that was the first carving we did. Uh, we I keep using the term "we" to mean the channel. I did on stream and then everybody said you've got to paint it so I did um, and we did that on stream as well it's just a, a scrap board as well as you can see just a scrap board um, to which was a little tiny bit of pyrography that was paint I was going to say pyrography but that's been done with a toothpick it's paint uh, the pyrography was on the back so we're going to um, so that was that then what we got pyro lots of pyrography then so, um, is it Junior or Felix? Felix, uh, first pyrography piece. 
on stream. A Felix the pussy cat. Felix the cat. Um, he is one of our cats. Interestingly, he's a really dark brown cat. He's not black, but he's really dark brown, so it's kind of a almost a portrait in colour portrait. Uh, and then having done Felix, the next one was uh, Junior, who is also one of our cats. He is black and white. Uh, and he's curled up asleep just over there. Um, but I'm not going to disturb him. So, um, pyrography. So that's some. And then. Now, th those sorts of things sort of take about 20, uh, 10 to 20 hours to do. And as you can imagine, because in this particular case, you, the, each of the fur is done as individual strands of fur on these. Uh, and it, it's textured. That's, that's a rough surface. It's a hair like surface if you like um, which is partly why it takes so long to do but it's really effective um, but uh, it takes a lot of work um, but, but I kind of you know, I want you to do something fast so this is a door hanger so this was just something done in one stream so one hour to do that and then one hour to do that so we've got a sleeping you know, it's the usual do not disturb sleeping or awake <laughs> Sort of thing you see on. Uh... Okay, Retro. I look forward to hearing how it's going. You're going to have a go. Are you going to have a go tonight? Because um, if you are, I will attempt to, to drop in. Uh, Retro says a, a YouTuber. He's going to try his hand at uh, streaming on, uh, on Twitch. So, um, recommend. Everybody, check, uh, check out his stream when he when he goes live. Uh, follow him and um, get the notification. You can always unfollow him afterwards if you think he's really not that good, but I'm sure you won't. Um, and I'll just carry on a little bit more with uh, with a couple of these. Uh... I've actually done more pyrography on stream than I thought. So I mean, we've got a monorail. This is from Walt, Walt Disney World in Florida. Oh, it was, because then this particular train is no longer there. They changed uh, trains. But, uh, you know, let's go back to the animals. So we've got the uh, the the lion. That was there. No, not at Walt Disney World, but there's, there's a lion that we did. Um, salute to Sunset. So, mainly an elephant, of course. Um, I don't know whether it's an African or an, in or an Indian elephant. I suppose African, given that there's a giraffe in the background. And um, that's a blank piece of wood, as is that and that. So, <laughs> and then um, again, some some quick things that were done. Uh, some just little cards with trees on. Kind of for no other reason than, oops, he dropping it. Then that was the first ever pyrography trees, and I thought, oh, I wonder if I can do them. And I happened to have these pieces of wood, so we sort of did four different trees, which was kind of fun to do. Now two of these have been coated in wax, and two haven't. Uh, so those two, I think, are coated. Was it that? No, that one is definitely, but I guess I can feel it, which is what I'm doing there but not quite sure which of the others is and then um, of course talking of retro games I suppose that might be recognizable to some people if you are familiar with retro games Hyrulean um, if you're familiar with the Hyrulean alphabet, you'd be able to read what that says. I'm not. I had to look it up. <laughs> but I do know what it says. Okay, Wolfie. Um, and just to let anybody know, it actually says Zaraganat. <laughs> right, let me put these away and I shall carry on with magic dots. Or at least just put these to one side. And I shall put them away after the stream.
And that's only two of the crafts, so that's carving and, uh, well, carving, carving the painting, but uh, carving and uh, the pyrography, just two of the crafts on this stream. Obviously this is sort of a craft, um, I guess you could call it a craft, so this is something else. Um, what else? There's, there's, there's the chain mail that you'll have seen, and you know, like I mentioned at the start, because we've finished the micro mail piece. This is uh, a bracelet, he says. Another thing that's done on stream, as is various forms of jewellery or beadwork, bead, bead, um, bead bracelets, uh, woven cord bracelets, necklaces, bands, uh, beadwork, some you know, Swarovski crystal bead weaving and things. Uh, is another thing that gets done on stream. And Punchcraft. No, yes, there it is. I knew I had one around somewhere. So, miniature rug making. So, this is, this, tw this is 12 inches across. This is made in the same way rugs are made, um, in that there's a, a needle which is is um, rammed up through the material, carrying it, carrying the thread with it, and then the needle's withdrawn, and it leaves behind a loop of thread, which you um, change colours at the right points. You get an image like this. I've got two of this. Um, you can then go through a real lot amount of thread there. And um, what else do we do? Well, there's another thing. He says, I'm looking for my piece of paper because you know what? I do these things on stream, but for the life of me, I can't always remember what they are. Uh, and uh, when I'm not streaming, I can remember. It's, it's stream blindness or stream memory loss. And uh, as soon as I finish streaming, I can go, I do this, 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 this and this. But when I'm actually streaming, I, I just can never remember what they are. And so I did actually write them down, but I think I've gone and now lost the piece of paper. Uh, the other one is something called scraper board, and the other was five, which is a black board. In fact, you'll see it pop up occasionally he uh, here. If you see a black board with white scratches on it, basically, uh, that scraper board it is black when you get it, and you scrape to reveal the white, and you make your images using that uh, that scraping technique. That's that thing. But then there is also very odd things that we do on stream as well. I made a um, a quadcopter one time. I didn't exactly flow it, fly it on stream because that's not very easy, but I did actually video the, the first flight of that and uh, we watched that on stream at one point. But I've been making, I've made a 3 I'm not made, I'm making, have started making uh, a 3D printer which was uh, done on stream as well. In fact, it's just set over there, but I don't think anybody was really was interested in seeing that being built, so I will finish that at some other point. Glass engraving. That's something else I've just started doing on stream. Um, fan art, I suppose you could call this. <laughs> uh, but uh, then, you know, sort of some under underwater aquarium style thing. So a little bit of seaweed. Um, a seahorse. Angel fish. So a glass engraving. Uh, on top of everything else, like the carving and things. So there's... Um, uh, it says variety streaming. I think that qualifies for a variety of things uh, and anything else that uh, comes to mind. Um, I do have some, some, well, I've got cross stitch kits and things, but that maybe is not a fantastically interesting thing to watch uh, on stream. It might be, I suppose, but um, that's another one that's quite slow to do, and that kind of needs a bit more concentration, perhaps, but. Uh, uh, various forms of cross stitch and needlepoint and things like that. All kind of the same thing, which is sort of just um, sewing by another name. And what? Uh, I'm trying to think of perlers was what I was trying to think of. I've got a perler kit to one side. That is a kit of the perler beads um, and the frames. There's no um, pattern with that. I've got to try and think of a pattern because what I've got is I've got a, a colour range of colours. 
sorry, colour. That makes sense, a colour range. A photo range of colours. So, um, what I can do is take a photograph, convert it into a polar image, and I've got the polar beads with which to represent that photograph. I just haven't found one that I like. Um, or that I think I think he's good enough to do. <laughs> uh, I have this habit of um, materials. If if I've got some good materials, like a lovely piece of wood, um, which is intended for carving, I kind of want to reserve it for a really special piece. But I can't think of something that's worth it. So the piece of wood sits there waiting for this special piece which possibly won't happen is they're just thinking oh i would like to do this and get on with it uh, it it sort of gets left and uh, i kind of do that this the pearlers it's the same thing uh, i'm kind of doing that with with them as well i've i've got a big a zero sheet of wood um, to do pyrography i'd love to do a really big image it's not an image big, but a, a, you know, like a landscape, if you like, something really large, you know, epic uh, scale, if you like. I don't know, a space scene, anything, you know, something really sort of panoramic. And um, again, that sat there waiting for the right image to come to mind. Um, otherwise, I could cut the wood up and make small things out of it, but it seems a waste of a really nice big piece of wood. Uh, so I, I have this sort of slight habit of reserving things and never actually using them and I, I keep telling myself just get on with it you know you can always buy another piece of wood um, and then uh, you know if you, you and uh, it, it's in some ways in some ways it's you know reserving it you know because you know, I can think of things that I might want to do with a piece of wood. I've got a nice round piece, which is actually meant for a bowl blank. But it would be nice, for example, to carve a curled up pussycat, because, you know, curled up in the circle. And uh, it's sort of... I don't want to, don't want to use it, because I don't know how to do that. I can see the image in my mind, but I don't quite know how to carve it. But instead of sort of just getting on and doing it, because Everything I've carved, I did not know how to carve when I started. I just drew it out and then started and worked it out as I went along. It, you know, a lot of this is um, why I try new things, is to learn something new. And uh, you know, doing something like carving the curled up pussycat would be something new and I'd learn how to do it as I did it. And if I messed it up, so what? It's a 20 quid piece of wood. <laughs> Yeah, that's like throwing twenty pounds down the drain. I mean, already with a piece of wood that size, half of it, end, at least half of it, ends up in wood shavings. Um, so you know, great for any hamsters you've got, I guess. But uh, you know, <laughs> that's just the just the unfortunate thing about woodwork. You know, a lot of a lot of the wood that you get ends up in sawdust. But. Uh, I, I sort of really ought to just get on and do it, but it's it's still this I don't like to waste decent materials and it's um I tell a lot of people, you know, who say things to me like I can't draw. Well, you know, if you don't practice you never will. And I'm kind of almost doing the same thing myself, you know, I don't want I know I'm gonna mess up this piece of wood so I don't wanna use it and yet it's just so what? Mess it up try again you've learned something so um, yeah from these days it, it's like I've got some tiger nuts as well they're, 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 they're nuts <laughs> but they're, they're big they're about this size to carve don't know what I'm gonna carve on them but I just thought hey they look fun to cut there's other be fun to carve it's something different never carved a nut before, I have no idea what it's going to be like, but I've got some. And yet again, I don't know what to carve in them. And uh, they're, they're set in a box. I kind of see some of these materials and think, hey, that would be fun to try. Yeah, I've got a, an idea of trying something with it and um, don't always I get you know get the material and then go right so actually what am I going to do with this 
and I don't always know. I'm, I've, I've looked at for quite a while, for example, um, ostrich eggs. Now, with ostrich eggs, good, well, gods are the same in a way, but um, with ostrich eggs, I can do, there's two crafts I do that will work with ostrich eggs. One is the pyrography, because you can apply pyrography to an eggshell. Um, it may not smell very nice, but you can do it. Although, it, whether, yeah, I was going to say, it certainly doesn't smell very nice if you do it on bone. Um, whether eggshell would be similar to bone, I don't know. Uh, but the other thing I do is carving. But I, if, uh, with carving, um, there's blade carving and there's rotary carving. Rotary carving is well, a router, for example, would be uh, using a rotary tool to, to cut wood. Well, when a rotary carving, you use a handheld tool to do it, and different different styles of bits of things, but they're basically all rotating, so you're using a rotating tool. And uh, for the glass engraving, um, I use a dental drill, uh, and I use little tiny bits to, to cut the glass. But I can do. I can use those same bits uh, to to carve into eggshell. And uh, with you can take something like uh, an ostrich shell, which is actually quite thick, uh, and and cut it into a filigree pattern. So you can cut space out. And you can do things like put a candle inside, for example, just a small one, because uh, otherwise it tends to burn the inside. But um, which will then shines out through the filigree. Uh, so you can get quite complex shapes and patterns and just doodle or you can do actual things, you know, actual shapes as well. And uh, so that's something I kind of keep looking at uh, to do and maybe sort of you know, uh, cut a, you know, take an ostrich egg and um, actually sort of carve it. And then um, there's variations on eggs. It's an emu egg, I think, or um, similar bird to an emu. Um, not an os not an ostrich. Uh, kiwi. I can't actually remember the bird now. But the the eggs. Uh, uh, are, I think on the outside they look a dark green. But if you sh start to shave away the um, the shell, it goes. It, it changes colour. It goes blue and then. Um, basically goes to blue and I, th I think there may be other colors involved I can't remember now uh, but so it, it, you you can not only carve through the egg straight through but if you if you if you sort of carve through just the surface you can get a different color so if you then light it from inside you'll get like a blue lit uh, area you know like looking through a stained glass window perhaps but variations in, in one color and uh, I keep, I, it's from time to time I'll look at those and go, that looks like it would be interesting to try. And, uh, but I've never actually yet gone as far as buying um, either those eggs or an ostrich egg uh, to actually do it with. Unfortunately, they're, uh, they're not actually that cheap. I mean, as you can imagine, there's... Uh, the, it's not the sort of thing you go down to your local supermarket and buy. It's an ostrich egg, but you you um, you can actually, but certainly in the UK, you can actually buy ostrich eggs, and you can actually buy uh, fresh ostrich eggs. You can use them to make omelettes. It makes a big omelette. <laughs> it does an ostrich egg. I think it's the equivalent of something like a, at least a dozen hen's eggs, or something like that, or even more. Um, but you can actually make omelettes with um, uh, with ostrich eggs. I, however, would buy them blown and clean. Um, so they clean them, then they put them in a um, a liquid which um, removes the any, any uh, so the internal residue, and then uh, uh, you don't have any problems with them sort of going off, shall we say? Um, but uh, so they sort of sterilise the insides. And, uh, and then you, it's, it's safe to carve as well. But that's um, that's kind of something which I thought would, would be quite interesting to do. I don't know if I could do it. 
or whether I'd make a mess of it, but, um, but yeah, I was thinking that they're not fantastically cheap. I'm trying to remember what they were. An egg is something like about something like about ten pounds or something like that. Oh, well, it's this fairly sizable thing, and you know? so I suppose for the sort of price, it's and I can't remember what the price is. Yeah, and I mean, it's they're probably about that sort of height, which is what ten inches, something like that. Um, it's probably not a bad value for that, the, you know, the price, but it's um, it's just a, a you know buying an eggshell <laughs> for for twenty pounds or whatever it is just seems a little bit. Mm, I'm not sure I you know can justify doing that, but uh, they. Uh, it's it's an idea for something that I might want to try, and um, if I ever do try, it will be something that I will actually probably uh, do on stream. I mean, it would be a relatively unusual thing, if not a first, to actually carve a um, an ostrich egg on stream on Twitch for the first time ever. Yeah. Uh, 10 to 9. Okay, well we are coming up towards the end of the stream. Not finishing just yet, but... Uh... Uh, probably somewhere around the 9pm um, local time here, which is in about 10 minutes. Uh, so we'll, we'll get to about then and, and then think about what to, to do. Possibly what I might do is just finish off all of using all of these dots that I've got in here uh, and then uh, that saves me trying to put them back into a plastic bag to keep them safe because um, as illustrated by uh, three of the four uh, three of the pyrography pieces I showed earlier we have four pussy cats here three of them you've seen pictures of Emmy is the one you haven't which is the female cat I really ought to get around to doing Emmy Maybe I'll do her in pyrography at one point. Uh, then we've got a paragraphic image of all of them. Um, now there's an idea. But um, she's a tabby cat. And she uh, she's a rescued cat as well. Um, one that we rescued. All, all of our cats are effectively rescued cats. Junior rescued himself. He moved in. He was a feral cat and he moved in. And uh, so, um, yes, but they have a tendency occasionally to walk over the desk here. So uh, last night they scattered the um, the uh, chainmail rings that I was using. Uh, it's quite likely that they'd do something like stand on the end of this and these bits would just go all over the place. So I tend not to leave them out. And the easiest way not to leave them out is to put them sticky, sticky down onto this... Um, this picture and that way then they don't go anywhere and if anybody's ever seen any videos of printed circuit boards being made um, the components get put onto the boards by pick and place machines I kind of feel like a human pick and place machine doing this <laughs> It's kind of big up or down, big up or down. Although I'm sure a pick and place machine would have a, um, a lot better accuracy in putting these down. I'm not sure you could pick them up from this thing. It would need to be on a nice neat reel for that. But I'm sure it could finish a picture like this in about uh, a couple of minutes. At the speed those machines run at. And this is one of those things at the end of having done this as we will have done for something like about two hours. It's kind of surprising in a way how little but how much we've actually done. Um, because uh, for this stream which will have been two hours we've done this piece here and we've done all this piece here that's in black. It kind of doesn't look a lot except it's taken two hours so therefore it probably is a lot but it kind of is a lot anyway when you sort of 
kind of look at it in terms of the whole picture. We've added sort of uh, quite a bit of texture to the picture. And if you wonder what I'm doing here by just dropping that slightly, I'm just causing all these little dots to jump a little bit and flip over so they, they lay flat side down in the tray, which means I can pick them up um, the right way up to, to just stick down. Uh, so I don't have to sort of try and turn them over or anything. So it's just a, a quick way of uh, getting them all the right way up, well, not all of them, but trying to get most of them the right way up. And of course, um, Retro Banjo earlier on saying, you know, and must need a steady hand to get th these placed accurately. When you come back and look at it afterwards and you see how not in line uh, these are, uh, I'm not exactly placing them uh, with 100% accuracy in the middle of the square. They're sort of going nearly. I occasionally notice one that's way out and I'll sort of you know, realign it afterwards like I just did one there just to sort of make it look slightly better uh, in an area but of course I'm the only one that notices that anybody else who looks at it won't notice it. it's the usual thing of an artist you can see all his own mistakes not that I particularly think I'm an artist in respect to this um, particular craft but, but uh, anybody who sort of makes things can see what it is that they've done wrong or could have done better the trick, of course, is not pointing it out to the people around you. Only on my stream, I tend to do that because part of it is to illustrate the fact that even somebody who knows what they're doing makes mistakes. And uh, then the skill then is in rectifying those mistakes or at least making them not visible. And the only way to sort of describe that whilst I'm uh, streaming is to actually tell you I've made a mistake. So, um, watching me, you will see more mistakes because I'll be pointing them out than you would do watching somebody else do the same thing. Um, in actual fact, whoever you're watching is probably making the same mistakes, they're just silently correcting them. Right. So we're motoring along here, so to speak, we're getting through these dots quite quickly. Which is a good thing, I've put a lot out. And probably about a quarter of the pack. So there's a big pile at the start of this stream, and by the end of it there's going to be none left in this tray. do then is go see if Retro Banjo is uh, streaming and uh, watch him. Watch him live rather than watching him uh, on a YouTube video. To anybody who's watching now that wasn't in earlier, we had a YouTuber uh, in, in the stream. Uh, YouTube.com slash Retro um, Retro Banjo. He um, he uh, puts up videos that are retro uh, NES and SNES games. So if you're interested in any of the old games, um, he is playing through quite a few of them. I was just thinking that there's kind of a soundtrack to what I'm doing here. Can you hear this sort of, I won't say snare drum, but it's sort of a, 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 a noise every time I pick up one of these things. And I've just realised it's the bracelets on my right arm which are in, you know, coming into contact with the desk uh, and making this sort of <sighs> drum roll, for want of a better description. Nothing like a drum roll, of course, but sort of an alert noise. And that one 
We've got something on the bottom on it. Let's get rid of that. Put that to one side. In fact, put that in that tray because that's where all the bits I'm going to throw away are in. Uh, come on, turn over. Let's have some the right way up. Of course, sometimes when you do that, all the ones that are the right way up turn upside down. Which isn't what you intended, but just the way of it. And then you knock them like I just did, which turns even more of them upside down. Oops, didn't actually pick one up then. So no particular order you do these things in, you just do whatever you, wherever you want to feel like putting one of these dots down, you put it down. And of course it does help to stick to the colour scheme that the, um, the designer originally intended, because it kind of would maybe look silly with black eyes. Mm, oh, you know, black around the eyes perhaps or with green fur maybe but <laughs> if you really want it to I guess you could do that um, but uh, this I guess is totally free form you don't have to do it but you know, if I want to put one there and one over here I can go ahead and do it there's nothing I don't have to do it in any particular order direction or um, anything like that. In fact, sometimes what I end, what I do sort of to half amuse myself is I'll create little patterns and then go in and fill them in or just almost, it's almost like a game sort of, I'll, you know, do this row and just using sort of slightly different, I will say, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know, different ways of doing, doing things. Just to make it slightly more interesting when you uh, when you're doing it, and that way you kind of get through it without realising because you've sort of been playing this little game of filling in a little, you know, a small amount of space or a row or or something like that. Some of these are actually stuck together. Uh, as they've come out of manufacturing, so can't use those because it has to be flat uh, on the bottom when you stick it down, otherwise they basically don't stick very well. And then they come off, which wouldn't be good. Wouldn't look good with bits missing. That's a broken one. That's a broken one, that's a broken one, that's a broken one. So it's just the ones at this end. And you start going, am I going to have enough to finish to the end of a row? Not that it matters if I do it, it's not like I'm doing um, chain mail or something where it's a good idea to stop halfway down the road, <laughs> uh, but just uh, nice to sort of finish something, you know, finish an area. Oh come on, I mean, what, uh, you know, it's, it's Murphy's Law, they won't turn over now because there's only two or three left, they'll always bounce such that they're upside down. Two more, that one's bounced out but at least it went the right way up. One more, that one, come on, there we go. So we started with a tray full of black dots. That tray full of black dots is now in this area here. So 
So as you can see, it, it's kind of amazing how it sort of this the unfilled bit is kind of grey and and misty like, and then it becomes sharper almost, uh, and obviously more vivid as the colours come in, even with the black colours. Uh, so I'll just if I just peel this back a bit, you can sort of see the full effect. Yeah, because the the clear plastic, of course, sort of shadows it a little bit, and then it, it sparkles. All sparkly! Ah, you catch the light. Which is one of the fun things about this, that, that sparkly effect. Uh, we are finished all the black. These are broken ones, the bits that are stuck together, so I can't use them. And we've used all the ones in the tray. I'm not going to put any more out, it's uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, UK time, it's just after actually, which is about time we finish the stream. Been running for um, almost an hour and two hours, close to two hours, which is about the normal length of time. So, whilst we uh, just wrap up, I'm just going to remind anybody that's watching now about the bottom blue box there. That's got all the URLs in it, the big one, the zaragonart.com is my website. It's got a little bit of information about some of the crafts, like the pyrography and some of the inspiration behind the pieces. So if you were watching earlier, we, we should salute to sunset, the, the elephant and the giraffe. There's a little bit in there, for example, about that piece, the inspiration behind that piece. Uh, there's the usual social websites there, of course, twitter.com and Facebook. So there is a Facebook page. Twitter.com, good place if you want to just get stream updates um, or anything to do with, with with the streaming itself, like uh, when a video goes up onto YouTube, which I'll come to in a minute. Uh, if I'm going to stream uh, when I'm going live, I'm not going to stream, I'll let you know. I'll try to let you know on Twitter before before the stream. So it's always a, a good place to just pick up on the odd bits of information. Not a, not a, uh, a tweet every two minutes or anything like that, but um, you know, it's, it's all to do with either the stream or the, the stream related art. And I mentioned YouTube that there, um, I'm gradually uploading up these recordings. Whenever I broadcast on Twitch, I create a recording at the same time. Twitch only keeps them for about two weeks. I keep them f so far for almost two years. And I'm gradually uploading uh, all, the, all the archive, um, partly because I want the disk space back. Three quarters of a terabyte. Uh, something like, um, something like about 700 hours of video eventually being uploaded onto YouTube. So if you want to see any of the old stuff, like we were showing earlier, the carving of Ruth the Dragon, that's up to episode 20-odd at the moment. So it's a, it, it took a long time to carve, but if you want to see bits or even end-to-end -end as to how it was carved, um, they are gradually going up onto YouTube. At the end of it, the series, I will try and put a time-lapse in, although quite how you can compress things down that much. I don't know, that's going to be a challenge to, to compress sort of 60 hours or more of carving down into 30 minutes. We shall see. But if you want to take a look, we're well, working my way up to uh, modern times, shall we say. Um, not even halfway there yet. And I think I did something like about 12 videos this weekend. Uploading 2 gigabytes per video it takes quite a bit of time. And the other thing that's there, of course, is the Etsy shop. So the jewellery, like I mentioned, this particular piece is not yet in the shop. It will be going in. It won't be cheap, unfortunately. It takes a long time to make something like that. Uh, but there is jewellery in, in the shop there. So we can add the .com. Um So things like uh, chains like this one. Not that one, this one. There are chains like that one, but not in sterling silver, which is what that is. So, anodized aluminium, uh, niobium, uh, titanium, stainless steel, uh, bright aluminium, all those sorts of metals um, are available. Different weaves. Um, this one is a full Persian, this is a half Persian, this is a candy cane, this one is a um, round male, uh, and this one is European 4-in-1. Different, different shapes, different things. So there's uh, there's a few interesting things up there. I would say they're interesting. I made them, but so if you're interested in sort of handmade jewellery, which isn't um, stone-based like diamonds and things like that, 
then uh, then take a look. I think they make would make fantastic Christmas presents, but I'm selling them. I would think that, wouldn't I? Um, they're all handmade, made to order, so if you do want them, I advise getting uh, an order in earlier rather than later because it takes a little while to make, uh, depending on just what it is. Uh, anything from a couple of hours to tens of hours. And I guess the final things before I hand you over to the uh, the adverts of Twitch is just to say at the top of the stream window here, you've got two buttons. I believe you've got two buttons anyway. One is the follow button, of course, so that uh, I appear in your uh, favourites. be nice to be a favourite. Uh, and uh, you get notifications when I'm live. You can see me in your following list, etc. The other one is the subscription. Um, so if you would consider subscribing to the channel, uh, the proceeds of which help out the channel in buying materials, whether it's the aforementioned wood I was talking about earlier, or uh, a... Uh, a tool which will do glass engraving, these sorts of things. Stuff which gets used on the stream. That's what the proceeds go towards. So with that, I will hopefully be on again tomorrow night, somewhere between 1900 hours and 2000 hours GMT, which is the current time in the UK. And we will stream for about two hours. The time window, I'm afraid, is just depending on how I've, what time I've managed to finish work, uh, get home and actually get sort of an evening meal before I can start streaming. So keep an eye out for in that window. I will generally tweet just before I go live, and of course Twitter will uh, tweet. Uh, Twitch will probably tell you when I go live, possibly several minutes after I've gone live knowing Twitch, but at least you'll get a notification. With that, look forward to seeing you on the next stream. Bye for now.